welcome. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Already alive and awake. I love it. I want to start with a question for you. Have you ever felt like you're supposed to be happy? Hmm. Like you're checking off all the boxes, doing all the right things that society says you're supposed to be doing, but maybe inside you felt empty or numb? Or maybe you're even winning the game of life, getting all the awards, all the accolades, but inside feeling defeated or lost. That happened to me. Many years ago, I found myself sitting in a beige cubicle in a bank tower in downtown Toronto. It was a hot summer day outside, but I wouldn't have known. I was freezing cold inside an overly air-conditioned bank tower, working 14 hours a day, crunching numbers to help the bank save money on pencils. I had graduated from one of the top business schools in the country, had been recruited into this job that everybody wanted in management consulting. I was earning a ton of money. I sounded really good at cocktail parties when people asked the most boring question ever. So, what do you do? Please never ask that question at a cocktail party. <laughs> I had it all on paper. I was winning, except for one thing. I was miserable. I could feel my soul getting sucked out of me with every line of data that I crunched. And I knew in that moment that if this was success, I needed to find another game to play. So I looked around and I thought, is this it? Now what? So I embarked on a quest from that moment to go and define, redefine success, other versions of what it was to win. I took a leave of absence from that job, and I devoted myself to what I affectionately called my lady of leisure year. At that point in time, I was so overachieving, perfectionistic, and driven, if you'd have asked me what my passions were, I honestly couldn't have even told you. And so I made it my single mandate of that year to do nothing productive whatsoever. Anything that could lead to a line on my resume, a degree, was off the table for that year. So I spent a lot of time really learning about recreation. I'm not talking about the like work hard, play hard, party animal kind of recreation. I was already really good at that. I'm talking about the play kind of recreation, leisure, fun, things just for the sake of fun. So I spent a lot of time that year doing things like yoga, reading books, cooking. I went traveling around the world, and as I traveled, I noticed that in other cultures, they worked to live versus living to work. I spent a lot of time scuba diving on that trip. And I remember one day was one of the most epic days of my entire life. I was on a liveaboard off the coast of Thailand, and we were scuba diving four times that day. And for all four dives, there was a school of manta rays, because if you've ever seen them, their wingspans are about two meters wide. There are about six or eight of them. And for all four dives, they kept circling around and around and around. It was so perspective shifting to be underwater, literally almost like on another planet, redefining what success looked like and what it was to truly live. At the end of the day, I was sitting on the boat and I was watching the dive master as he was putting away all the equipment. And I had one of my many moments of awakening. I was like, this is that guy's job. He gets to do this every single day of his life. Now that looks like winning to me. The most transformational day of that entire trip happened on a riverboat cruise in the backwaters of Bangkok. This was far away from the opulence of Bangkok, the rich and the wealthy hotels. We were going to see a floating market where all the local people lived. And as we rounded a bend in the river, we came upon this scene of five or six little boys, about seven or eight years old. They were wearing nothing but little tidy whitey underwear. They were swinging on a rope swing and landing in the water, and every single one of them had a look of pure joy and pure elation on their face. As I looked around, I could see the houses that they lived in that were no bigger than the average North American garage. And the guy told me they lived there often with three generations of family. Outside every single home was an offering of orchids, fresh fr fruit, and rice. And these were offerings of gratitude to the ancestors for everything that they had. I came back to Toronto, still with no idea what I wanted to do, but with a lot of inspiration and transformation that had happened. I went to meet with a former colleague because I still had this job waiting for me. I'd taken a leave of absence, and I was going to meet with him about the idea of going back to work at the same company in the beige cubicle that I had left a year before. I was meeting him at the corner of King and Bay, which is in the heart of the financial district of Toronto, probably one of the wealthiest corners in the country, which is one of the wealthiest countries in the world. And I was walking down Bay Street, and I was struck and overwhelmed. As the people were walking towards me, I was greeted by a sea of angry faces. 
They were dressed to the nines, but the sparkle was gone from their eyes. I felt like I was walking among the walking dead. I knew in that moment there was no turning back, and I committed myself on a journey to what I now call becoming fully alive and awake. This journey has taken me to the deepest dives into academic research, specifically around leadership and positive psychology, immersion into ancient wisdom traditions like yoga and Buddhism. I've had the privilege of connecting with thousands of clients over the years who've invited me into their innermost spaces and shared with me their stories of what their dreams and fears and hopes are. And I can promise you from my work that money does not buy you happiness. And most of all, I've used my life as a giant social experiment stretching the limits of human potential by doing crazy things like having four babies and more recently moving my family down to Costa Rica because why not, or por que no, as they say. <laughs> Living the Pura Vida down there. So a lot of what I want to share to you, I'm thrilled and excited to be sharing with you the culmination of my life's work today. I want to share with you a simple but powerful model that's meant to inform but is also an invitation to transform. I'd like to use my story as a case study to show you all the different components of the model. But I invite you to also map your own story. Storytelling is such a powerful tool. So map your own story onto this and start to gain any meaning that you can right off the bat. As you can see, the nerd in me is still very much here. I love a good two by two matrix. I'd like to share with you going over the different X and Y axis and then we're gonna deepen it with different layers as we continue in today's talk. On the X axis, you can see on the far right, the word purpose. On the far left is the opposite, which is having no purpose, not really knowing why you're doing what you're doing. I call that just having no intention. On the top of the y-axis is the word passion. I think we can all understand the essence of what that word means, yes? <laughs> and at the very bottom, the opposite of passion, which is really just doing things out of duty because you think you should. Can you guys relate to ever having done something just because you think you should be doing it? So you get the essence of these quadrants. As you can see on this model, I started my career fully entrenched down in the quadrant of the walking dead. You can see this in many financial districts in the world, I promise, if you go to any major city, if you want to go and visit. I, I noticed there are a lot of um, places that, that people are, again, just maybe going through the motions, not filling themselves up on joy. And I can laugh about it now, but the truth is that it was a very painful time for me. I was anxiety ridden. I felt lost. And the research shows, recent research out of Harvard, that depression rates are 10 times higher than they were in the 1960s. The Red Cross has recently named loneliness as an epidemic, the detriment to our health, the equivalent of smoking 15 cigarettes a day. I can tell you that in my personal practice, I've seen a massive increase in people coming to me sharing stories of mental health concerns, specifically around anxiety and depression. The suffering is real which is why I think there's no more important time to start getting this message out into the world, sharing this model, because there's no need to suffer. With some very simple but powerful tools and shifts in perspective, we can truly start to reverse these negative spirals and individually and collectively start to positively spiral towards thriving and reaching our highest potential. So the, the importance of this model and my story is to start to tap into, first of all, our passions. So in my case, I went on my Lady of Leisure year. This quadrant, up on the top left quadrant is all about play. I call it hedonism, but not in the extreme extent, although taken to its extreme, it could manifest in addiction. This is where we explore play, the arts, music, human connection, scuba diving. There's not really a point to it. The ancient yogis called this lila, or the ecstatic dance of life, going to a rock concert. I'm sure you can all relate. I think of this as like the fountain of youth plugging in avatar style to the tree of life. It's where we get our vitality and our juice and our aliveness. So as we fill ourselves up with our passions, what I noticed is that after about a year of doing nothing but being the lady of leisure, <laughs> I desired to do more. And I wanted to start to contribute back, create and give back. So when I got back to Toronto, I ended up getting onto a, a career path that was very much rooted in servant leadership, on giving back, on serving my clients. I went on to have for babies, which is very much about service and giving, and overall really cranked up the purpose quadrant. Taken to its extreme, this is the Mother Teresa kind of quadrant, this can lead to burnout. And again, there's a lot of research talking about the rise in burnout, which not only impacts productivity negatively, but also the well-being individually and collectively in our society. So what we want to really start to think about, and in ancient yogic traditions, this would be called the dharma, or the, the calling, Japanese um, name for it is ikigai, 
Why are you on the planet? What are you here to do? And what my research has shown and experientially what I've found is that we need to have a healthy integration of both. The hedonism is the being, the receiving, the listening. The martyrdom is the doing, the giving, the speaking. Traditionally, if we think in terms of the yin and yang, you guys have probably seen that circle with the, the, the black and the white and the op opposing small circles within. It's the masculine and the feminine divine. And we all have all of it within us. An optimal performance, flow state, and experience happens when we integrate both. So while most two by two matrices go from a straight line from the bottom left to the top right, this is actually more of a dynamic model. So think of it more in terms of a positive spiral as you loop from into your passion, fill yourself up with joy, with play, with connection, with music, with dance, with art, with food, with all the things, you can become overflowing with energy and then use that energy to go down and serve, give, create, write, whatever it is that you're meant to do in this lifetime. And together, as you feel good, you do good. As you do good, it makes you feel good. And it's creating this ever-expanding positive circle leading to flow states of peak performance and peak experience, which is also very deeply supported by academic research. The real secret of this model, though, lies in its nothingness. This is represented by the zero, zero point at the center of the model. The stillness, the quiet, the space. I overlay on this model the mindfulness practices that I've been blessed to receive through my years of immersion in ancient wisdom traditions. There are over 10,000 academic articles discussing the efficacy of mindfulness practices like meditation, yoga, and breath work. So we are not going to go over all that today. As much as I love research, I'm also a huge believer in experiential learning. So I'd like to invite you to share with me an experience that I think will show you, even in just a few moments, the power of tapping into stillness so that we can tap into highest states of consciousness, our intuitive knowing, to guide us to take inspired action out in the world, to create the change and be the change, as Gandhi said, we wish to see. Are you with me? You ready to play? All right, let's do it. Please join me, sit up straight in your chair. Shoulders up, back and down. Maybe you can even feel a difference already just by changing your posture. Join me and take a deep inhale and exhale. Two more like that. Inhale, full deep inhale, exhale. Last time, deep inhale, exhale. Take a moment now just to observe the impact of just a few deep breaths, maybe quieting your mind, calming your nervous system. Just notice. And now take a moment to ask yourself, looking at this model for the sake of self-awareness, where are you now in this moment in time? Maybe you're high on passion, you're really filling yourself up. Maybe you're working really hard and on purpose, doing your exams, your schoolwork giving out in the world, down in purpose. Maybe you're feeling lost or defeated, spending a little bit of extra time down in the Walking Dead quadrant, ready to make some changes. Or maybe you've got it all happening together and you're already on that positive spiral, up and alive and awake, heading towards your highest potential. Know that wherever you are is exactly where you should be. It's a journey. Everything is changing in every moment, in every day. But for the sake of today's experience, I'd like you to take a moment now and ask yourself, what is one inspired action that you could take to help you live a more purpose-driven, passion-fueled life? And listen to what your intuition tells you. If you really want to crank it up, I'm going to invite you to share this inspired action at the break with somebody else, create some accountability so we can collectively work together. I hope that we've planted some seeds today of transformation that will continue to grow long after we leave here today. I know that as each and every one of us leads by example, stepping more fully into our own highest potential, we lead by example and create a ripple effect out in the world. Collectively, as each of our ripple effects joins together, I know that we can create a massive tidal wave of change and positive impact, as together we can shift humanity towards becoming more fully alive and awake. Thank you.